All right. Well, Oprah like it. <laughs> wow. To Curiosity Public, the podcast and the COVID 2019 YouTube show. That's right. We're still on lockdown. We're, we're still going. on Zoom. We're still on Zoom with our virtual backgrounds. Dylan is still a Sith Lord. Um, That's like three days in a row now. Yeah, totally. I am Dylan. Yeah, anyway, so I'm Dutch. <laughs> so Everything's getting worse. <laughs> and also, Jules here. Jules here. Um, oh my god i think dylan's had a little too much to drink at this point because now he's, uh, done, he's actually palpatine but um <laughs> let's get today's topic we've been going through different spirits and um picking three that we would recommend so we've done whiskey we've done tequila sorry we've done rum and now we're doing now tequila we're, doing tequila. we're gonna have um dylan pick a tequila that's kind of an in inexpensive easily accessible one I'm going to be picking one for connoisseurs and Jules, of course, as usual, would be picking the extravagant showboaty show off flexing tequila. Oh yeah. So peacock. Is it subtle flex or is it? No, we're peacocking. Is Jules ever, ever subtle flex? <laughs> no, that's true. Um, before we get to that, what are you guys sipping on Dylan? Well, so we're drinking tequila. I, I definitely am drinking Ooh, I like that. Uh, so I am drinking Tears of Yorona. Excellent choice. Yeah. Tears. Uh, but, you know, I don't think it's on any list. <laughs> <laughs> well played. It's just too, it's just too, uh, too, too obvious. Exclusive, yeah. Uh, well, I'm actually going for Tequila Arete's Glan Clase Extra Añejo, which is nice. a pretty uh, awesome bottle. It was a gift to me from actually from Dr. Oju, who has been on mm. one of our podcasts. Nice. Um, it is incredibly good. Very, 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 very solid stuff. Jules, nice. what are you drinking? Uh, so I'm actually drinking tequila and just going through my bottles. I've got an El Agave uh, <laughs> Reposado. Oh, that's actually not bad. That's yeah. This is that's a, a local restaurant down here and they actually have some pretty good stuff. I don't know where they source it from, but it's, yeah, they had oh, a man. Yeah, I I, you, it would have been fun to make fun of them. Don't uh, <laughs> yeah, I've had it. What do you know of tequila? Dylan? No, no, no. I wanted to. I, I was hoping that he would just pick like I am drinking this rare bottle of Jose Cuervo <laughs> Montezuma. <laughs> um, no, they actually um, their Añejo is good, and I, I saw it. it yeah, the Añejo is good. A couple of years ago, I walked into a random grocery store and they had their extra Añejo priced for the same price as the Añejo because they just really? realized what they had. What they had, yeah. That stuff was really good. Oh, nice. Like I said, I don't know what the distillery is, um, but it's, it's pretty good stuff. Yeah. So tequila is an interesting beast, mainly because um, it's actually one of the more regulated spirits. You know how when we talk about bourbon – we talk about sourced bourbon. The interesting thing about tequila is on the back of every tequila bottle, there's going to be an NOM. Sometimes actually it's on the front of a lot of them, but there's an NOM number and it's, um, it actually identifies the specific distillery that the, um, that the tequila came from. So you can have this number and basically track down all of this stuff. That's you know what we call it with bourbon is sourced. Um, so it's, Actually, pretty interesting. Um, it, it's a it's a spirit. There's actually websites where you can type the nom in and figure out all the different brands of tequila that are made there. Hmm. Um, so it's a, it's a cool spirit. It's obvious. It's it was actually the one that I was into before I got into whiskey. So I'm excited to talk about this, but I don't want to go first. So Dylan, yeah. you want to go first again? Of course, I love going. Can you first. Give us our pick for the Everyman. All right. So you know, the, the Everyman can't be bothered with garbage right so i mean there are a lot of tequila out there that are on the lower end and they're not truly sippable and i think they do not really represent the art and the craft of tequila 
So this was difficult because you had to balance that. You can't go crazy with the price, right? I mean, if you, you know, the more you pay, um, you, you know, you might be able to find some, uh, you know, better sipping tequila. I think you have, you have more variety. But if you want to keep the cost down, you also don't want to go down and, you know, find tequilas that you just take shots with, right? What I'm looking for is tequila that is sippable, but can be, it can be um, consumed on the rocks with a twist of lime, or you can even mix it and you won't feel bad. So what did I pick? I picked Fortaleza, the entire line. So depending on your budget, you could do a lot of different things. Now, you can go Blanco, which I actually enjoy because it's it's almost it's really pure and you yeah, know I I enjoy yeah I enjoy sipping white dog and everything and I think Blanco's is, is kind of in that line but if you truly want a um, well, I don't want to I'll interject here just so we can have a chance to talk about the Blancos really quickly but you get the citrus hit in a Blanco but you almost you never almost get it in in the repos or the añejos but if you like that kind of crisp citrusy hit like there's some blancos out there that are su supremely sippable and really nice i agree i agree i th I mean i sip the blancos right it, depending oh of course depending on the on the brand but i think fortaleza if you have the collection i mean you can't go wrong um obviously the añejo is is very good and, it, and it's totally sippable you can have it neat and it's and it's perfect um the rep reposado is very good i think a lot of people use that and mix it but you know, for my money, I think it's either the Blanco or the Añejo. I love those two. Um, you can get it for 40 to $50. Yeah. It's not cheap, but again, if you're looking for tequila that's like 10 to $20, it's going to be really difficult for you to just kind of pour it into a glass and start sipping it. It's going to be extremely difficult. It's going to be harsh. Uh, you're not going to be having fun. Even if you put it on the rocks, it's not going to be that much fun. But I guarantee you, Fortaleza, if you if you pick Lañejo and you put it on the rocks with a twist of lime, I mean, you're going to be in heaven. It's going to pair great with your dinner. I, I mean, you you can't you can't go wrong with this. Yeah. And I think Dutch brought up the fact that it used to be a lot cheaper yeah. until the secret got out. You know, the secret basically got out, and then the prices went a little bit higher. So and I'll, and I'll throw out also. There's they also release a seasonal winter blend of the mm. Reposado and it's basically it's the Reposado at cask strength and it's really interesting stuff like because normally mm. it's 80 proof regular like most tequila but the uh, the winter blend is pretty cool yeah so nice. you can't go you can't go wrong with this folks I mean during this lockdown you want something and the bottle is actually beautiful yeah I it's really a great like the bottle great logo. so it, this is a great investment you won't go wrong with this this is my recommendation awesome pick. My, and actually I've, I've had the opportunity to meet Guillermo, the the distiller, and if you ever have a chance to meet him, he's cool. like he looks and acts like the most interesting man in the world from those commercials. Like, it's really kind of <laughs> uncanny. Uh, but he's actually here in San Diego all the time, so it's it's cool to to actually meet these guys. Sweet. So great choice. Um, I'll yeah, go next. Sense. Unless Jules, I feel like we should save Jules for last because it's uh -oh. a, nice, a nice surprise. That's too much pressure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go for the connoisseur and. <clears throat> Obviously, Dylan knew what I was going to pick because he's a connoisseur and he's sipping on this very tequila, which is the Tears of Yorona. There you go. I mean, there's just nothing else you can pick. Yeah. Um, Herman Gonzalez is an absolute uh, master. Legend. Tequila. Uh, the most humble guy you'll ever meet. I, I, get, I had a chance to meet him too at a, at a tequila event. He, um, it was really funny because we were there with some uh, industry insiders and who knew him personally. So I got to meet him. And at the end of the event, there was a, a tasting and he was there and we went up and we were talking to him and he basically had a couple bottles with him. And he's like, well, they didn't give me a table. And he was like, he's like, just come over here in the corner. And he just started pouring us tears and he had these other experimental batches. Wow. And just the coolest guy, super chill, super laid back. Um, the, the tears is a, is kind of like his, his pinnacle tequila. He's got another brand called T1, which is excellent. I put it up there with Fortaleza, really, really good stuff. Um, but Tears is aged in three different barrels. It's in um, all in oak, but um, oak that was scotch, oak that was sherry, and oak that was brandy. So it really has this complex flavor. I mean, it's it's if I had to recommend a 
tequila to whiskey people to try if they want to get into it it would be tears of Verona. journey it's a journey it's it's absolutely a journey it's absolutely amazing um i'll do one other quick anecdote before i pass it on which is um through one of my contacts that's in the tequila world i actually got a bottle of um Armand's annual he, he i guess he just he has a couple of special barrels that he experiments with and he sets them aside for friends and family and he, he bottles them. And I happen to be able to get one of those bottles. And it is just the most transcendent tequila I've ever had. It, it's mm. like anything else. I think I've given Dylan a, a, I think I've given both of you guys a taste of it before. Yeah. That yeah. T1 bottle. T1. Right. Yeah. Yep. And it's just, it's unlike anything else. It's not like tears. It's not like T1. It's not like any other tequila you've had. Um, it's just really incredible stuff. Um, Truly anyway. an experience. Yeah. It, it's, um, I'm, I'm kind of, worried that you're you're revealing this secret because you know f until now i mean I, I can still get the bottle i, I personally can't i always ask to have, ask uh, dutch to get me a bottle yeah. <laughs> but i i love the fact that he can get it for me because i mean i get scared when i'm when i'm down to the to the the bottom because it is such a good good oh, it's incredible. tequila it's incredible. incredible tequila um and the, the other cool thing i'm so the, the price point on it it's around 200 you can find it maybe between two and $300. I can pretty consistently yeah. get it for like one ninety nine, But the good thing is it's a one liter. It's a bigger bottle. It's actually a really cool looking bottle. I love the bottle. Yeah. The bottle uh, looks great. All glass with like a cool stopper on the top. Um, but definitely no questions. That's the one I think of when I think of the tequila for the connoisseur. A great pick. That <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, Jules, what do you have? For extravagance. To blow your mind. Better, well, better speaking flashing. of cool right. bottles, which should lead you to where I'm going. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm going with the Classe Azul Extra Añejo, the ultra ultimate. This thing is crazy. I mean, look at the bottle alone, guys. This thing is beautiful. Again, another handcrafted ceramic decanter, but with 24 karat gold and like pure silver etched Man. into it. And Are you talking about the, the Ultra? The Ultra? Yeah, the Ultra. Oh, the Ultra. Okay, okay. Yeah, and that goes for around seventeen hundred, which you can buy right now <laughs> online. <laughs> Again, smallbites.com. This is not a paid advertisement. <laughs> and this thing's just beautiful. Again, you know, <laughs> from the class of Azul, class Weber Blue Agave, hundred percent. Um, you know, and distilled. I think that's the one thing you say about it. Hundred percent agave. I know, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> I've never tried it myself, so I have no anecdotes to share on it. Oh, other man. Then this thing will definitely stand out on your shelf yet again, and I'm sure you would enjoy the drink. I mean, I agree with you that it's a museum piece, right? I mean, oh, yeah. I, their other line, you know, I would say it's a museum piece. I think I gave, a, I gave it as a gift to uh, one of my family members who's a big uh, tequila fan. And, you know, they, they don't drink it that much, but it's a beautiful, like, art piece. It is. Oh, yeah. You know, you put, you well, put, it, you put it on the uh, on the shelf. You know, what's funny is you guys know my brother, and he's like a super tequila nerd, right? Right. He yeah. loves tequila. And everybody knows he loves tequila. I can't tell you how many bottles of Class Azul he has <laughs> that people have given him as gifts. Not... Not the ultra. I'll give you that. Not the and it's probably they don't even know anything about tequila <laughs> they don't. because they, they saw don't. the bottle. Yeah, they don't. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. They see the bottle. They give them like the regular repo or the añejo, which is, right. I mean, it's which those are decent too. I mean, not to rip on them. It's too, okay. But, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I'd say it's yeah. okay. It's a great looking bottle. Right. Makes a nice gift for somebody that doesn't know a lot about tequila. But if you're like super into tequila and you get that gift, you're gonna be like, oh, yeah, like the bottle. Like, oh. Yeah, you want you want the bottle that looks like G four. Which is basically right. like a wine bottle. Exactly. Dude, the best tequilas look. Oh, yeah. Crap. Yeah. I mean, even this one I'm sipping on, like, I, I mean, I think it's a good looking bottle, but like most people would look at this and be like, oh, oh that yeah. looks like some cheapo. So simple. Yeah. Simple stuff. But this is yeah. way better, I would say, than Class Azul. No, no offense. Um, I would love to try the Ultra because I bet you, I would hope at least. Yeah, that the I would hope too. Pretty and I do want, I mean, that's why it's on my list of got to get it when I can. It's like the, it looks like a black. When I got 1,700 bones to burn. Well, oh, you know, the, that the economic uh, impact fund money should be coming and, and maybe, uh, I think I know what Jules got is kids doing to feed. Got kids to feed. <laughs> Man, I, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, it, it definitely gaudy, especially for, for sure. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. um, I, you know, I don't, see, this is what I, I, I object to. I don't like things that are 
inflated in price because they put some stupid like diamond or gold on it, right? I mean, like they go, oh, this is the most expensive iPhone that's out there. Yeah, because you put, put like a 20 karat diamond in the middle of the, the case. You know, I mean, like that doesn't, that doesn't mean Wait, anything Wait, you want to me. pull out that Porsche edition one plus eight you have in your pocket? <laughs> it's stupid. Like th- those things I, to me, I, and like I want substance, right? For me, it's all about what is within like yeah. a red glowing microphone. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't believe in the aesthetics. I want, I want substance, quality. Yeah. yeah. I so, wish, uh, if any of you guys have tried classes, well, please comment. Let us yeah. know how it is because I'm genuinely curious. I mean, I've tried the, the ultra, the, right? ultra. the ultra, especially I've the ultra. I've tried the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I've tried I mean, the other ones. ultra. I've tried the yeah, other ones. No, I, I, I mean, I haven't been that impressed with the rest of the lineup. I don't find it offensive by any means. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not bad tequila, but it's just not. I mean, I feel like with such an awesome bottle, it's got to wow me, and it doesn't particularly wow me. But maybe the Ultra would. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you, Dutch. What would you pick as a like the most extravagant Ultra Super tequila aside from Jules's, you know, travesty, oh, <laughs> gaudy monstrosity? I don't know. That's a tough question. I mean, honestly, like. For me, the stuff that's the most interesting is the stuff that the master distillers of the lines that I like come up with. Casa Dragon is. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Um, and I mean, a lot of that's like the stuff that doesn't have a lot of marketing behind it. That being said, like I'm... Casamigos. Casamigos is not bad tequila, actually. I, I would prefer that, that over... I mean, but there's a lot of marketing behind it. But a yeah. lot of great marketing, but it's actually, I think... But it's, the Blanco, freaking smooth, man. I remember... It's not bad tequila. I, I do good. like that tequila. Yeah. Um, but so, for instance... Some of those, some of the premiums of the kind of trendy brands are actually not that bad. So Avion, which had a big thing from um, one of those HBO shows, I don't even know which one it was, but they put out like their super premium, like Avion 44, which I tried and I actually mm. thought it was really pretty good. Um, you know, El Tesoro, ha- their anniversary bottles are yeah, pretty darn good. Um, so, you know, those... You never know. Like any of those ultra premiums from any of the big lines can be pretty good. Even the Jose Cuervo de Familia. I mean, that's pretty good tequila. I mean, it's El Humidor. I don't know what their ultra premium is, mm-hmm. but I mean, they all, almost all of them have it, and usually they're pretty decent. So that's a tough question, Dylan. I don't have a good answer for you. Well, thanks. Thanks for being <laughs> useless. I'm useless. That's great. Dylan trying to tee you up, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we should have had Doctor Oju on this show. Yeah, yeah, we need this Doctor Oju. Well, we'll we'll get him on. We'll get him on, and, uh, and then he's gonna rip our suggestions. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, he's gonna post in the comments for this video. How stupid! Oh yeah, I bet you. So, on that bombshell, Jules, when she takes up. Well, for those of you listening on our podcast, thank you very much for listening. And those on YouTube, subscribe. Oh yeah, subscribe. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> You kind of threw me off with your your toast. (laughs) But really all we care about is getting to people to subscribe. And that's subscribe guys. We're trying to grow this out. Um, Hit that thumbs up though. If you like this episode Um, and yeah, subscribe for more videos from curiosity public, stay safe, stay healthy. Honestly, I don't even care if you hit the thumbs up, just subscribe, but stay curious. We need, we need some thumbs up, man. (laughs) We got to work on that YouTube algorithm. All right, guys, stay curious. See you next time.